For today's lesson, our focus standard continues to be from grade 8, functions, standard A, define, evaluate, and compare functions. Our topic for today's lesson continues to be from mathematical models, comparing views, and we're looking today at equations to tables. Our essential question is still how do we compare functions expressed in different views? And so this is our third video, and we've taken a lesson looking at each type of view and comparing them. So we're now at the third one, looking at equations and tables. Let's go ahead and jump right in. For today, I want you to look at the information below to compare the exchange rates for the U.S. dollar to euros, as well as from the U.S. dollar to Canadian dollars. So over here on the left, I have the exchange rate for U.S. dollars to euros expressed as an equation, which would be y equals 0 and 85 hundredths x, where U.S. is represented by the x variable and euros is represented by the y variable. In our table, I have the, US exchange, the exchange rate for U.S. dollars to Canadian dollars. U.S. is the x values here in the top row and the Canadian is the Y values here in the second row. So take a couple minutes to just kind of, or a little bit of time here, to take a look and to see what kind of information can you decipher and what kind of information do you think we're going to want to look at today to compare these exchange rates. So the first thing I want us to look at today is are the exchange rates examples of linear or nonlinear relationships? And so I want us to go ahead and, or you to go ahead and pause the video here, take a look at this equation and this table, and what work can you do to prove one way or the other is this linear or nonlinear? And then when you have your work done, go ahead and resume the video to compare your work with mine. So let's go ahead and compare. So here, um, let's look first at the US to dollars, or US to euros. And so it's in the equation form, and one of the things we've said with linear and nonlinear is to look for exponents. We don't see any exponents, and so that's an indicator it's linear. It also looks really familiar to the slope intercept form. So we could say a couple of things. We could say, yes, it's linear, which probably need more specific here. The equation is in slope-intercept form. You could have also said, yes, it's linear because there's no exponents. And in this case, as far as it being in slope-intercept form, our m value, our slope, or our rate of change is 0 and 85 hundredths. And all the, there's nothing written here in, um, off to the end that would be where the B place is, which is an indicator that our B value is zero, or our starting value is zero. And that would make sense. If you have zero dollars to exchange for euros, then you're going to get zero euros back. So it would make sense to have a starting value of zero for this context. If we go ahead and look at our work to can decide if this table is linear or nonlinear, at first glance we're looking and we see really different jumps. X goes from plus 10, plus 40, plus 50 to plus 400. So X doesn't appear to be changing by the same amount. And for a Canadian, same thing. We see plus $12.60, plus $50.40, plus 63, plus 504. But if we look, we can kind of see some patterns in the numbers here where we see really similar digits or we see multiples of the same value. And so we might want it, we need to do more work. This is one of those cases where it appears like it might be nonlinear, but we need to do more work to prove it one way or the other. So I've gone ahead and set that up here. So when we do this, we always want to take, we're looking to see if it has a slope value where the y and the x change by this constant amount. And so I set up each pair, the change in y, $12.60, to the change in x, which was 10, that first pair here, and then the second pair, $50.40 over 40, $63 over 
50, 504 over 400. And I could have looked for a common, greatest common factor to divide into each of these, but with these decimals, that makes it difficult. So remember, our other method is to simply treat these fractions as division and divide them into their decimal form. And when we do that, we get 1 and 26 hundredths for each of them, all the way through. And so 12 and 60 hundredths divided by 10 is 1.26, 50 divided by 0.4, Sorry, 50.4 divided by 40 is 1.26, so on and so forth. So because we look at this rate of change from our table and compare that, and they are in fact all equal, then we would say yes, and again I need to be more specific, it is linear. The rate of change is equal for all the values in the table. So. We want to get that out of the way first um, as we compare them. Are they linear or nonlinear? We've decided that they are both linear, so let's take a deeper look at these exchange rates. So the next thing we want to take a look at is would you rather exchange your US dollars for euros or Canadian dollars? So we could say, well, we know we have X amount of money to take a trip. We want to take the trip where our money is going to go the furthest. And so would we rather exchange for euros or Canadian dollars? All right, so let's take a look for the exchange, the rate of exchange, which is another way of saying the rate of change. This is telling us with our M value of 0 and 85 hundredths that for every US dollar exchange, we get 0 and 85 hundredths euros. So there we go. It looks like we're getting a little bit less money than our dollar there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the exchange rate for Canada. So from doing our work above, we can see that for every US dollar exchange, we can get one and one point and twenty six hundredths Canadian dollars. Now we're getting more than a dollar, Canadian dollar. Here we're getting less than one euro. So what do you think? Which would you rather exchange for? Where is your money gonna go the furthest? If it was me personally, and I was making this decision based solely off the exchange rates, I would rather exchange my money for Canadian dollars because I'm getting more more for my US dollars than I would if I exchanged them for euros. And so that is going to conclude our video today looking at exchange rates and in this case using it as a way to compare from equation form to table form. Um, please make sure that your notes are complete and it may be a good idea to start a summary in your study guide questions and come ready to do some more work of comparing functions in class.